Keys to the Commonwealth, a podcast where we share the real stories of local community members who are using real estate to build personal wealth, along with tips and tricks from professionals across the industry. And now, your host, Landry Fields. Welcome back to another episode of the Keys to the Commonwealth podcast. Uh, my name is Landry Fields. Uh, excited to be back this week. Um, today's guest we have on is Aaron Bradley. Uh, who is with Bluegrass Real Estate Media. Uh, so we're going to kind of talk about all things related to, uh, I guess, pho- photography, videography, um, staging, and all those aspects of when it comes to real estate, either selling your house, either or as far as foot properties or trying to get a new tenant in or promoting yourself in general. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about all those things. So yeah, Aaron, welcome to the show. Yeah, appreciate you having me on, man. Excited Absolutely. to be here. Yeah. Uh, so I've been seeing you around, obviously, social media a little bit um, for the, a lot of the good work you do on the, the photography, videography side, et cetera. And so especially, you know, even sh- for real estate, for selling, or from the aspect of, you know, short-term rentals and different things like that, obviously, that's a key uh, thing that's so important to kind of put the best foot forward uh, for your property uh, so people aren't turned off or they're actually, you know, stay engaged and interested and so forth. So uh, before we dive into that, though, give us a little background about yourself, uh, who you are and so forth. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm Aaron Bradley. I'm uh, I'm from Frankfort, Kentucky, a okay. small town of Frankfort, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, went to Western for a couple of years, sure. was in uh, political science. Wasn't really for me what I yeah. realized. Yeah. Uh, so I came back here to Lexington. Wanted to get in real estate. Okay. Um, I was a leasing agent, actually, at Newtown Crossing. You familiar with yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, so student apartments and everything. All right. Um, and thought that, you know, was a great entry level to getting into real estate sure. and everything. I always wanted to be, like, a realtor, get my license. Um, and then from there, um, I met Scott McIntosh and yeah. Chris Sheets. The terrible uh, people. Yeah, dude, awesome, awesome guys, great guys. Yeah, um, I actually met them through Airbnb. I was really? just messaging hosts on Airbnb okay. trying to find more opportunities yeah. in real estate, kind of learn more about it. Right. Because uh, I guess the end goal is really, you know, to invest in it. Yeah. Um, and ran across to them. Uh, so started working with them at Revitalex. Yep. Um, helping manage their properties, helping out a little bit on acquisitions where sure. I can. Um, and then from there, I kind of saw the value of marketing your properties yeah. um, and how much that helps within leasing. And like you said, kind of getting the foot through the door, you know, a property can be the best price. Um, it can have a great location, yeah. um, but the first impressions, what matter, right? right. Yeah. 100% first impression. So had you always been involved or uh, ever had an interest in photography and videography prior to that? Or is that something that kind of came about as far as seeing the the need there? Yeah. So good question. Not really, man. Um, yeah. you know, I'd always gone skiing and stuff like that had a GoPro. So we always kind of okay. put like little montages together of that, <laughs> but that's really as much as uh, sure. I'd really dived into it. Other than that. Yeah. Well, that's why I love the day's world where you can, I mean, if you want to learn something, there's nothing holding anybody back from learning something. So yeah. I think mean, the whole point of this podcast being the fact that I did want to learn about real estate, didn't know anything about real estate. And I was like, let's, let's do it. Let's figure it out. And, uh, why this whole real estate podcast, uh, like I said, exists to begin with. So, uh, but yeah, so you gotten into that and like I said, you've kind of blown up pretty quickly as far as that goes with like the real estate side. So talk to me about all the different services you all offer at Bluegrass Real Estate Media. Yeah, so uh, we do photography. Um, so what's really cool about what we do there is um, it's HDR. Okay. Um, so it's one for every one photos. There's actually three photos being taken. Okay. Um, there's one that's super overexposed, super uh, yep. bright, you yep. know, and then we got one that's just a regular photo, basically. Yep. Um, and then we got one that's really low exposure. Um, and from there, I have editors who hand blend it through Photoshop. So you're really yeah. getting the best of all three worlds right there. It kind of looks uh, more realistic to what we'd see with our eyes, sure. in other words. Yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, we do videos, um, 4K video, all that good stuff. Um, we're really starting to branch into like branding as well for agents. Okay. Um, I think it's super important that you know you get your face out there, kind of like what you're doing with this podcast. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, you're your own brand. You know, when people think of Nova Insurance, you want them to think of Landry Fields, Dawson <laughs> Fields, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with my brand, I want people to think that's Aaron Bradley with yeah. Bluegrass Real Estate Media. Um, yeah. And to help other agents do that as well, because, you know, there's like, what, 4,000 something agents here in Kentucky. Is that how, in the state? Yeah, I think in the state. I, you're, yeah. Gonna have to fact check me on that. <laughs> I mean, it sounds right. I yeah, mean, I mean, countless just in our area for sure. So, yeah, yeah exactly. I can imagine that's the case. And like, it's really like, how do you differentiate yourself? You know, yeah. um, 
So we're getting into that a lot. I really encourage agents when I'm starting to do videos, like, hey, we should do one with you in it. Yeah. And, you know, we could make another one that's just like a listing uh, yeah. video. But we do, you know, cinematic listing videos where it's like more like, you know, peaceful kind of a tour of the property in a video. Sure. Um, and then we do, you know, like social media videos as well that are all vertical format. Okay. Um, great for like, you know, Facebook reels, Instagram reels, TikTok, all yeah. that good stuff. Yeah. And then we offer Matterport virtual tours. Um, those are awesome. You ever seen those? That? So it's essentially you ever taken like a 3D tour of a space where you can walk around in it? Yeah, you kind of click the different hot spots kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm uh, starting to kind of branch out into other businesses with that, you know, hospitality, gym, stuff like that. Okay. Um, but, you know, it really gives you the opportunity. If you look on Zillow, um, you know, Zillow offers their own 3D homes. Uh, yeah. When people are looking to lease a house or to buy a house, it helps to be able to walk through it. Kind of helps realtors sure. and people that are doing what I'm doing, leasing, um, bring in more warm leads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. And then other than that, we do like floor plans and we're getting into reels for realtors too. So okay. complete social media for realtors. And then you said when you said floor plans, I mean like staging, you know, digital staging. Oh, yeah, like yeah. That. So yeah, we do a lot of like photo enhancements too. Like, you yeah. know... Uh, you know, virtual staging being one of them, that helps so much. Um, in a vacant listing, I always recommend virtual staging. You know, yeah. that way you could uh, at least play on the imagination of the people that are going to buy or lease the property. Sure. Um, you know, if their imagination isn't really strong and how yeah. they visualize yeah. a space, kind of shows them the potential of what could be there. Yeah, I imagine that that is only increased from a cost analysis perspective of digitally staging a place so people see it before they walk into it rather than having to actually go in and stage an entire house with actual furniture and stuff like that. I, I assume the cost difference there is night and day. Yeah, in absolutely. That sense, right. <laughs> so, and especially over COVID, you know, COVID kind of ramped that aspect up. I feel like even more so. Mm, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's been cool to see. Um, as far as the, you know, the properties and so forth like that, I mean, we talked about obviously you the best part of you putting your best foot forward uh, right off the gate, making that best first impression. So, so what do you all kind of do as far as that, as far as recommendations uh, when people are kind of listing maybe their flip properties or so forth? What do we ha need to have in mind as real estate investors uh, kind of maybe that you set, kind of advise or we wish people would know and have done ahead of time kind of scenario or anything like that as right. far as when it comes to those things? Um, so I actually have a sheet that I send out to my clients before the shoot that's okay. for the homeowners, the investor, you know, yeah. any party involved with the sale of the property. Um, but essentially it goes through, you know, like decluttering is like the biggest thing, right? You yeah. need to deep clean as well. Like you need to be able to walk in a property and it, it like smell as good as it looks. Right. Yeah. Um, but decluttering is like huge. Like, you know, you walk in and if there's like 30 things on the kitchen, counter, you know, Keurig, everything <laughs> needs to go in a cabinet, needs yeah. to have its own home, right? Yeah. Um, one thing I see a lot too is like, you know, loose wiring. Um, loose wiring? Yeah, loose wiring. Like, you know, like if a house is like vacant or like kind of new and you look where like a TV is going to be oh. and there's just like a, a bundle of okay. wires, you know, sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, yeah, like that's kind of what the sheet goes over, just how to prepare and like prep the property. Yeah. Kind of goes into like, you know, if you were to stage it, how would you want it to look and be sure. perceived to others? Is there a difference between that and obviously the other big part of uh, real estate uh, photos and stuff like that? If it's like an Airbnb <laughs> short-term rental side of things, mm -hmm. what's the difference there between what you all are doing a lot of times we're focusing on or is it pretty similar? Um, so with Airbnbs, it's a little bit different. So, right, right. like usually these things are already staged. Like they sure. like look just like amazing when you walk in. A lot of people have interior designers that come in and kind of like do the furniture, you yeah. know, have everything out. Um, really it's just keeping those clean, right. Is all I would tell like a host before yeah. I came in and like took pictures. Probably makes your job even easier if it's a Airbnb, right? Or yeah. Yeah. Respects, absolutely. Right? <laughs> Cause they are. Yeah. Obviously one is to look that good and, to begin with stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's cool. And then as far as the air, uh, the video side of things, you all do drone footage stuff, depending on the properties size absolutely, and so yeah. forth like that. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, from the standpoint of just kind of where virtual reality and everything else is starting to come into play, I mean, mm -hmm. is that really starting to kind of hit real estate much where there's aspects of technology either coming that you may know of or something like that where it would allow someone to, in essence, VR 
walk through the property type of a scenario in some facet facet or something like that? Yeah. So that's a good question, man. So like I got a piece of advice not too long ago that, you know, Lexington, just Kentucky in general tends to be a little bit behind on like the newer trends. Sure. You know, like if you went to LA or Atlanta or New York or Houston or Dallas, like a few years ago, you'd see realtors are like heavy in the videos, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's huge. And now it's just kind of becoming a thing here in Kentucky where it's like almost kind of like a norm, right? Yeah. Um, So usually I look to those bigger cities to find out what's going to be the trend in the next coming years. Um, And one of them being VR, uh, Matterport, so like the virtual tours that I do. Yeah. Um, You can actually, you ever seen those like VR headsets? Yeah. You put your phone in and stuff. Okay. People are starting to like do that for Matterport. It actually has like a settings to where you could do VR and walk through it. Yeah. Completely on your head. Interesting. Is that what the, the, is there special types of cameras I assume that have to be involved for Mm -hmm. that kind of a thing to take more like 360 degree type of stuff? I I don't know the technical aspects of that by, by any means, but I'm sure it's a bit different than your Sanders stuff, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head right there. It's uh, 360 cameras. Um, the really good ones too have like LIDAR. So they have like accurate measurements, stuff like that. Um, because Matterport has, you know, for builders, it has a use too and developers. Um, yeah. You know, you can get CAD files, CAD scans, stuff like that. Really? Yeah. So you can go crazy in depth then. Oh, that yeah. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I haven't really dived too much into that. I've kind of stuck to like the residential side sure. of it. You know, just helping buyers kind of walk through a home before they have to call an agent and come see it, right? Right. (laughs) Uh, Do you have any stories or success stories that kind of stick out in your mind as far as maybe uh, a property that was kind of struggling, but then they kind of, you know, that we kind of started up the... uh, the, the 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 listing with uh, coming in with some of your all services uh, and wish they would have done that maybe to begin with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, that's a good question. Like it's funny this morning in our referral group with me and Dawson, yeah. um, the realtor there with the brokerage, Sarah Zabawa, she had a listing not too long ago in Lancaster, Kentucky. Yeah. And uh, it had previously been listed for about six months. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, she's a rock star agent. She kills yeah. it, dude. Um, but the people wanted about five hundred thousand dollars for it, right? And in Lancaster, that's a um, lot. you know, yeah, that, that's pretty. That's up there. Um, and you know, it was a failed listing and everything. She came in and she basically already made it look brand new. Yeah. Um, but the cherry on top in what she presented today was the virtual staging, right? Yeah. Um, it really like it's not meant to deceive people. It's meant to bring people in and them actually be able to like visualize what the space could be, the potential that it has. Right. right? Um, so that played a huge part in it. Um, and she got it under contract in like a week. I think she (laughs) said she just closed on it. Like really like last week or today. Yeah. Yeah. And so it really becoming, it's becoming the standard. It seems like in that way, like if you're not doing it, then you're, you're probably losing, leaving money on the table and losing money from the time it's sitting on, uh, and especially as you know, in the Kentucky uh, market, for sure, and it's a lot of markets. But how la- shortage of uh, housing there is, you know that you know it, it. It there's not there's there's plenty of people out there to buying houses right now, even in this uh, current economy and recession and so forth. But uh, that, and you definitely see the trend of more and more people moving outside into different kind of local smaller mar- uh, markets and kind of driving in or something like that. So Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of cool to see that in that spins. Any other things as far from like a, the stories or whatnot as far as that goes at all? Um, so recently too, for Chris Sheets, he had uh, 4405 Todd Boulevard. This house was just a huge hit as it was, you know, yeah. has a pool, already okay. low inventory here in Kentucky and right. then right. has a pool too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, dude, it broke the record for how many people actually had saw it and interacted with the virtual tour. I could see all those metrics. Yeah. Um, last time I checked, it was around 700 something people saw it and around five or 600 people had actually clicked on it and spent time on it. Really? And, you know, not only does that help them be able to kind of explore the property? It keeps them interested longer, sure. right? That's why like SEO and all that kind of likes video yeah. Um, because it keeps people's attention longer than photos. Yeah. But man, that house didn't even last like two or three days. And so where are those offers? Where are they people, where are they viewing that typically? Uh, on, the it, on the MLS or Zillow. Yeah. Or Zillow, even the video stuff and so forth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you could yeah. post, um, 
You know, I'm not too sure if you could post videos on Zillow, but yeah. I know on like Flex MLS, you yeah. can post a video, okay. stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah. can, so they can kind of find it or realtors can kind of send it to that. Absolutely. So yeah. Is YouTube being utilized very much in that space at all? So not, or some not of the too more much cinematic that I've seen. ones. Yeah, so like, um, you know, that's what I'm, I've started to post my cinematic videos on YouTube. Sure. Um, and, you know, it's honestly a really good idea. Uh, yeah. You know, omnipresence is the, the name of the game, right? right. You want to be everywhere. You yeah. want to click on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, and see, uh, you know, want people to see it. Yeah. Get maximum exposure. I mean, that's why season two here, we're going to video. I mean, I'm already doing audio, so I might as well just add it. Yeah, so I absolutely. Can be every, you know, everywhere. People want to experience things in different ways, as well as, you know, when it comes to real estate, being able to kind of experience the property in different ways, whether it's here's mm-hmm. a video walkthrough, here's uh, pictures, here's, uh, you know, me actually going through the property, digital staging and all that kind of stuff. So very cool. And I think be, me and you both uh, kind of talked off air as well as like the importance of just, uh, especially for real estate, realtors, so forth right now, as far as having, you know, a kind of a brand or your your image out there, if that's the case, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the wholesalers or whoever it is, uh, you might not have, you know, something directly come from it type of scenario. Like for the podcast example, it's not like I have necessarily things directly come from uh, a podcast episode or something like that specifically, but it's just the fact that people, uh, it's been awesome to kind of get to really uh, cultivate a lot of cool relationships and people that just from knowing that it's there or seeing bits and pieces of clips or audio things out there before. And so I'm sure that's you are helping out with realtors and other people like that with that side of things too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, like you hit the nail on the head there, like what, what you would want people to kind of have a result with, that's like direct response marketing, right? Yeah. Um, that's you like basically creating an ad or um, you know, having like major call to actions or like yeah. promoting certain deals and stuff. Um, and there's a difference between that and branding, right? Sure. Um, branding, you know, with which is what I'm like focusing in on with some of the realtors that I'm working with right now. It's more about like creating that goodwill, right? Like actually providing value to people, being really honest with yourself when you're making this content. Are people going to be able to take something away from this and use this? Yeah. Um, are people going to learn from this, or is this going to motivate people? Yeah. You know, that's the best content that yeah. performs right there. Um, Educational, like thing, exactly things they're giving back. Absolutely, and you know, like Alex Ramosi. Yeah. Yeah, like one of the greats, right? Like he basically created like the talking head reel, right. essentially. Right. Um, and you know, he has a saying. Don't quote me on it exactly, but like branding and direct response marketing. Um, it's about like the, the time on the ROI, right? Like how much time it actually takes right. to, um, actually get an ROI on branding is much longer, obviously. Cause you're not like trying to necessarily sell people on something right there. Yeah. Um, but it's bigger because eventually, you know, you gain that reputation, you provide that mm-hmm. value to people, you know, right. reciprocity. Um, people will think of you when, you know, yeah. when Grant Carnarvon's a little bit similar where he wants to provide education, Absolutely. but it's like, Hey, if you want to, and so with Alex, Alex is, uh, Rosie, for those that don't know, he's more of a guy that the acquisitions.com. So they're buying businesses and so forth, mm-hmm. um, that are up for sale or want to be acquired type of thing, or take it to the next level. But yeah, and he just uses the platform as a way to kind of uh, make his name more known so that those who do find him that way that want to do that can. But obviously, you know, that's for the 1% kind of a scenario. But the Absolutely. ROI on that gaining of that 1% uh, is so much higher than trying to kind of market yourself uh, directly like, you know, let me buy your company, let me buy your company, let me buy your company. Whereas really people then are approaching you in that sense, more so than you having to kind of try to approach them and acquire them as a client or so forth. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, like, dude, you could binge his page, right? Yeah. And it just provides so much value. There's yeah. so much that I've taken away from him and tried to apply it to what I do, right? Yeah. Like yeah. his whole, uh, you ever read a hundred million dollar offer? Uh, no, I haven't. It's on my list for sure. Well, I've like, got a lot of books on my list, but yeah. <laughs> same. I'll answer. get around. I've got three kids, and so that takes up a lot of my time as well. But oh uh, yeah. yeah, that is on my list, and people have been talking about that. Yeah, hundred hundred million dollar offer, is it right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all about creating like a grand slam offer. Like yeah. his whole thing is like you should create an offer that's so good that people feel stupid for saying I don't want to go <laughs> forward with that. Yeah. He got his big start off like gym launch. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. and one of the things he talks about is like a guarantee, right? Like most businesses should have a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, and his was like all focused around how much 
uh, money he's going to make you, right? Yeah. So the end product is focused around his performance as well. So it's like, you know, yeah. it's, if you own a gym and you want it to increase revenue and stuff, it's almost like a no brainer to go with like his company on stuff like that, yeah. how to implement that into your business. How do you kind of stay current uh, and innovative in, in photography, videography, the techniques, uh, the marketing that you're doing and so forth these days? Yeah. Um, so I am in a real estate photographer group. That's like one of the biggest in the country. Okay. It's got like 4,000 something members, wow. honestly, probably more than that, but that's just what's in the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, and in that too, we kind of have like a little round table. So I meet with about 10 to 12 other, uh, real estate photographers based around the country and, you know, been able to build like good relationships there. Um, and now it's like, you know, a friendship, yeah. build friendships with it all. Um, and they're, they're great people and they're hustlers and there's people that are in this group that are doing like, have just like a crazy business, right? I've been doing this a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and they're just so busy. Like they almost have to turn down work. And then there's people that are just getting started. And then there's people that are just like me that are kind of like in the midst of starting, um, but yeah. not too deep into it yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we get together one time a week and we just go over, um, you know, we just kind of like talk about the business and how we can improve what others are doing. Yeah. I um, mean, within these groups too, trends and like new ideas are going left and right, new uh, like products and services that we could provide to people. Yeah. Like the newest one that I saw was um, a drone tour, like virtual drone tour. That's like... Uh, well, so you kind of led me into my next question, honestly, as far as what the future kind of real estate when it comes to marketing, photography, videography, where that's going. So you're saying like where they would start flying a drone through the house kind of a scenario yeah. or not. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me about some of the things that were probably coming down the pipeline then in that sense. For sense. sure. So that's one of them. You know what FPV drones are? Um, no. First person point of view. So like you okay. literally have a VR headset on Yeah. and it's, it's these crazy videos that you see of people like flying in between buildings and flipping around like, like yeah, skyscraper, yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's like one that's huge right now. It's like all over the country that, uh, people are flying these like tiny little drones with these head <laughs> headsets on through the house. And it's kind of like a sped up, like walkthrough similar to what I do sure. now with like a social media walkthrough video where yeah. it's just speed ramp throughout a house shows the layout and everything. Yeah. yeah. It draws their attention for a much shorter period of time, but packs in as much as it can in that period of time. Absolutely. And you know, it gives the agent something to kind of brag about too, that like, you know, we're using <laughs> new innovative ways to, to market properties. Yeah. I'm like sure that. the agents are always trying to figure out how to kind of, you know, one up each other as far as brand or new techniques or other stuff like that. Absolutely. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, the house is the house, but you know, again, for a realtor, it's all about brand and how you market that and, or for staging, like I said, from the, us, to, you know, if I'm flipping a property or something like that, we're currently flipping our second property uh, right now type of thing. And yeah, that's putting awesome. that best foot forward and so forth at the end of the day. Uh, that's cool. Uh, being from Kentucky and around Kentucky, what's uh, some of your favorite things about Kentucky? Uh, Keeneland. Now as an adult? Keeneland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Keeneland. We got sure. a lot of people that say, you know, uh, out of state. They're like, oh, you, uh, Churchill Downs. And I'm always like, eh, yeah, it's I mean, fine. Yeah, not as good no as the time as Keeneland. Right? In, you know, uh, Louisville and so forth. But uh, yeah. Keeneland's definitely a special place, and I think very unique in that sense as far as a horse track, more unique than anything else in the country. Yeah, for sure. I believe it or not, I had not even been until like later on in college. Like, it was oh, like, really? Yeah, I don't know why. It's just not <laughs> something I ever did, even though I lived in just a few miles, you know, not that far away from it. That sense. What's some of your favorite uh, local restaurant to visit, though? So, like uh, Carson's for sure is yeah. probably my number one, dude. I love yeah, so Carson's. People say Carson's. We just need we need another one. In town. Oh yeah, Goodness. absolutely. Like uh, Malone's, you yeah. know that that's like a go to too. Um, right. I'm trying to think. Uh, like fast food that is just like authentic, like to the bone, man, is Poppy's Rapido. Yeah. You ever had that? Yeah. I've not been to the fast one. But like, oh, okay. You've been, I've like been to more down. of like the sit down one. I've yeah. not, but I'm assuming it's the same type of food. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. See, yeah. I haven't, I haven't been to the sit down one, yeah. um, but I've been to the fast yeah. one. Like anytime, like I'm in a, it's, you know, it's right there on South Broadway, right, right, right. next to like where I live and stuff. So I'm like, okay, anytime I'm coming home, <laughs> I got to hit that. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Well, dude, anything else to kind of before we wrap up the to kind of point out where, where can we find you as far as online on social media? So you might want to contact you to uh, kind of help out with their uh, flip or their listing or whatnot. How do they do so? Yeah, so um, Bluegrass Real Estate Media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can find me on all those places. YouTube. Yeah. Um, that's my website too, www.bluegrassrealestatemedia.com. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty self-explanatory, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, you know, give me a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. That's really uh, how I've really been able to grow my business is just through Instagram right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. It's all kind of been organic through there, been reaching out on there. So nice. Yeah. Well, sweet stuff, man. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. You coming on day and having absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. We'll check everybody else out on another episode next week of the Keys to Commonwealth podcast. To learn more about this podcast, visit our page at keystothecommonwealth.com. To connect with Landry regarding insuring your investment portfolio, email Landry at novainsurancegroup.com or call 859-687-2004.